Okay. I mean, okay. All right. Okay. So, so it says, it says on the thumbnail, PVE mode. It says that on the thumbnail that P it says PVE mode on the thumbnail. And, uh, I, I, <laughs> like, it, it's, it's reasonably well known for people who followed me for a long time that I haven't played League of Legends in a long, 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 long time, right? Like, I used to play fairly regularly season two, season three, and then progressively from there I fell off it more and more and more as the game became more and more focused around its competitive scene, more and more professionalized, and frankly also got more and more toxic. Um, I just sort of, I stayed in love with all the characters, with the world, with the lore, and that became my focus, but the game itself became sort of a, yeah, I, I really only engaged with it through esports at, uh, for quite a long time. <sighs> but then, you know, PvE mode, you say. PvE mode, you say. See, because <laughs> one of the reasons why I don't play League of Legends, why I fell out of, of, of touch with it, is that I just fell out of love in general with competitive gaming. It's just, I don't really, I don't really enjoy competitive gaming that much. Like, it's one of the same reasons why I've always sort of felt alienated from fighting games, is like, I don't really have that drive to like, I want to get in there and I want to fucking beat this guy, I want to be better, I, I want to win, right? Like, I don't really have that. But I do love me a PvE mode. I do love co-op PvE shit. I do love that. I do, I, I do love playing together with a bunch of other people towards like a common goal. That's why I mean support in League of Legends. It's like, I don't really want to win. I don't want to beat the other guy. I don't want to duel anyone. I just want to help my friends or at least my team, as it were, succeed. I just want to help them like stun a guy so someone can get a kill. Hey, that's fun. Like that's, that's what I enjoy. So the same PvE mode and I'm sitting here like, fuck, if that's, if that's good, if that's good, if that actually gets support, that's, that's like, I'm gonna be fucking, I'm gonna do the Al Pacino thing. It's just, just when I thought they were out, they pull me back in. I don't know if that's, that's not a good Al Pacino impression. I don't think it was an Al Pacino impression at all, but like, it's that thing, right? It's like, you motherfuckers can't do this to me. You cannot make me start playing League of Legends again. But okay, let's let's see what it actually is. And let's also we got an update on Lee Sin, so that that'll be nice because he's the next. Uh, he's the next of the just excruciatingly slow visual updates, um, and I've been wondering what's up with him. Hang on, I forgot to turn on the audio for you. You didn't hear any of that. Not that it's important. It's just their names. But hey, folks, I'm Andre, also known as Medla. And I'm Jeremy, a.k.a. Riot Brightman, and we're back with another dev update with the real Andre this time. That's me. <laughs> today is Tuesday, March 26th, so as usual, everything that happens after today won't be covered in this video. Today we'll be joined by the Modes team to talk a bit about Arena and an upcoming- Okay, this doesn't matter. This isn't really important. But wow, the compression on- Let me full screen for you. Wow, the compression on- like, that looks like a camera that's struggling to get enough light to me. Like, that looks like a camera that's, that's, that's struggling with, with, like, too little ambient light in the environment, which is weird. Like, why wouldn't they... Huh. ...coming mode that we've teased a little bit about earlier this year. Then we'll talk about the updated Champion Mastery system and Lee Sin's visual update. Could be Here's some compression Eduardo and thing. Selena to talk about modes. Hey, everyone. I'm Eduardo Cadmus Cortejoso, team lead for modes on League. Hi, I'm Selena Chuchu Chang Liu, the delivery lead on the Modes team. First, we want to give you a little update on Arena. In its most recent run, it was pretty successful, though we did see play hours decrease quite a bit over the course of its run. We're making some improvements this time to try to give it a little bit of extra variety and longevity and giving it a longer run as a result to see how interest holds up over a longer period of time. So that's one of the that's one of the arguments that Riot has 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 used a lot, right? Is that they have their data that says that like we provide these alternate modes like there was a there was a time like when they were experimenting a lot with like alternate modes like the star guardians mode the uh odyssey mode um like all these alternate game modes and what they found in their data was that players would engage with these things extensively for a bit like intense engagement at first and then sort of the game would more or less like like PvE modes like like for example like the the Odyssey mode which was fucking excellent. People would sort of figure out okay this is how you beat it this is what happens when you beat it and then once they had beaten it once or twice, a lot of people sort of like okay well that's 
like well, f- kind of fell out of love with it because like that then then it wasn't really long term engaging to them, and that's sort of been the justification that Riot has used for not developing game modes for a long time and not bringing them back and not iterating on them, not sinking more development time into them, is that like they could see in their data that there was like this decrease in interest um, in any game mode that wasn't like Summoner's Rift or or like uh, ARAM, right? And on the one hand, fair enough, right? Like fair enough, like it's, that's sort of the principle of operating a business. You have to choose where you put your resources and there wasn't that much return on investment on investing into those game modes. Like fair enough, okay. Like on the one hand, yeah. On the other hand, it's also like, yeah, well, what the fuck did you expect? You have, like, like the people who play League of Legends and who are likely to, like, who will play the game modes that you put into the game, all of the people who play League of Legends are people who like to play League of Legends. Well, okay, I, I may overstate that. A lot of people who play League of Legends don't like playing it at all. Um, But the people who play League of Legends are people who want to play League of Legends, whether it's because they're horribly addicted to it or because that's their social thing. Like, that's the way they hang out with friends, they have a competitive drive, they're trying to climb rank, like, whatever it is. Like, these are people who want to play League of Legends, and a lot of those people are just not people who are going to want to play stuff that isn't League of Legends in their League of Legends client, right? And that's the thing of, like, yeah, obviously people didn't engage with these game modes more than once because they are all League of Legends players who want to play League of Legends, but my frustration was always, like, but wouldn't it be nice if you could use these alternate game modes to... Like, for example, do storytelling and, like, tell champion stories or shit like that and, like, build up a player base of people who don't necessarily play League of Legends so much. Who Like, maybe they play ARAM, but they don't play, but who will engage with and like and enjoy and, like, like replay and, and, and get interested in and obsessed with these game modes instead, right? That's That was always my, one of my frustrations is like, yeah, of course there's much lower interest from your core audience already, but what about expanding the audience? Like, what what about using the modes to expand the number of people that you're appealing to? And also, hey, these exclusive, like, these these custom game modes are could be really good for telling stories and doing lore in a way that you can't do in a MOBA. So wouldn't that be a convenient fucking tool to have on hand, right? <laughs> um... As usual, for me, it comes back to that always, right? Um, that was always one of my frustrations is like, yeah, no, absolutely. Like, the data says exactly what I have no reason to believe that they are lying about the data, but I just don't, I don't in- like the conclusions that these tend to draw from them, which is this thing of like, they seemed to employ that data less as, like, mostly as just like an excuse to do what management wanted to do anyway, which was to cut funding for anything that didn't sell skins, right? Um, like, that's what it felt like from the outside is that this reasoning was trotted out as like, yeah, no, absolutely. This is data that was, that was important in that decision-making, but rather than saying the actual reason, which is management doesn't want to invest in something that doesn't have immediate returns on investment. Management doesn't want to spend money developing something that doesn't generate skin sales, right? Like that doesn't generate the kind of engagement metrics that we have decided are important to League of Legends, instead of saying that, they said, well, I mean, data just says, like, the data just shows players aren't interested. And I hated that line of reasoning, because, like, no, players are interested, uh, but a lot of the players who might be interested don't know about it yet, because you haven't advertised it to anyone outside of the core League of Legends player base. Like, you haven't done anything to try and bring people in from the outside, which is one of the things I think TFT did so successfully. Like, TFT has managed to advertise itself outside of the core League of Legends player base. Legends of Runeterra managed to do it, right? Um, Now, Wild Rift, I think, like, bringing in the mobile gamers has perhaps created a little bit more of an existing base of more casual players who might be willing. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. But, like, but that's, like, 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 TFT managed to do that, managed to breach that containment and become, like, its own thing that brings in a whole different kind of player to the League of Legends client to play TFT is like, and I don't know the numbers and that I don't know how many people play TFT. I, it's enough that Riot has continued to invest in it quite heavily, but yeah, I was just, I was just always annoyed by that. Like, well, the data says you don't want any more game modes. The data says that you want to play. Yes, they do. But it's like, you have to look at that data instead of seeing, well, people are not interested. So it's not worth it and say, okay, they're like, this is clearly appealing to some people. And we need to find more of those kinds of people and show them that they can play this fun game mode. Anyway, I'm going in circles. Let's listen to what the man has to say. 
Our goal with Arena is to be a great mode to play when you're looking to experiment with crazy build ideas or you just love to react to more unpredictable situations. A mode for dreamers and the memers. So, in order to do that, when Arena is back on PBE, you'll be seeing some changes that the team has been working on for a while. First, the lobby is going to increase to 16 players. We want each game of Arena to be a little different from the last, but still competitive. So increasing the amount of teams means that you shouldn't be able to see the same pairs of champions over and over again. One of the other changes the team has been working on is a substantial update to the item system. This version of Arena has a new, unique class of items, Prismatic. Prismatic items are build-defining in a way that should shape future build decisions during a match of Arena. For example, the Demon King... Uh, I'm sorry, but the guy, he has like one little hair on his head that's just like standing up. And now that I've noticed it, I can't, I can't stop looking. I'm really sorry. You don't deserve this. Oh, shit. It's uh, I... Brown increases your basic stats it's, by a lot. It's but poking here's the up. Fun part. It increases each round you win. But if you lose a round, you actually lose more than you gain. So make sure you become pretty unkillable. The way in which you also get items has been changed. You'll no longer only purchase items from the shop. Now you can actually gamble using anvils to purchase some items at a lower cost, just a little bit less reliably. We're still experimenting with Arena's next form. Our hope is that you'll tell us how this goes and how we can continue to grow Arena into something that you're really excited to be part of League moving forward. Speaking of which, I have been toying with plans to play League of Legends again. Specifically, I was toying with plans like I'm just going to play with people from my Discord. Like no randoms, no like no dealing with like with like like whatever in the thing, like no queuing up, like just just get parties of people together, play with them. Because under those circumstances, League of Legends is usually really fucking fun, is the thing. Arena has also been quite attractive to me on that front. Like, I, I looked at Arena a lot when it was out, and I was like, shit, that's, that feels a lot like... That feels a lot like the somewhat more casual party atmosphere that League of Legends used to have back in, in yon early days, before competitive sort of took over everything. Um... And, like, I, I don't want to mythologize. Like, back in the old days, League of Legends was always toxic as shit, right? Like, it's, it's like, that's not a, that's not a thing that is, that is, that is, like, that, that got worse over time in, in a lot of ways. Like, because the toxicity started coming from this place of, like, competitive raging. Um, but it's not like, it's not like League of Legends was ever non-toxic. It's just that back in yon olden days, there definitely was less of an ossified, sort of like, you cannot play a support champion in the jungle, you piece of shit, I'll find you and I'll murder your family kind of thing. It, like, there wasn't that same rigidity to the, to like, to the thing of, like, you have to build these items, you have to play these champions. Like, you could do meme shit, you could do one-trick shit, you could do, like, and it wasn't as hostile an environment as it became by the time that I quit. And I don't know what League of Legends is like nowadays. Like, cult the culture has probably shifted again, but... But it was like a thing of, of like, you had to play what was, you had to play in relatively orthodox ways. And if you didn't, then everyone from your own team to the enemy would shout at you, right? Um, and like mock you and denigrate you. And it's like, and for someone with like, this is the other thing, like, being a person with ADHD, turns out there's a thing called rejection sensitivity dysphoria, <laughs> um, which makes that a, a difficult kind of gaming to enjoy and engage with. But I, I looked at Arena, I was like, oh shit, that seems like fun, playful, casual, something you can just do with your friends for fun. And if you play a stupid meme build and lose, people might not get so fucking mad at you. Like, that's the thing that's always so attractive about ARAM is that everyone sort of understands that. Like, yeah, if, if you try hard in ARAM, you're kind of a weirdo. Um, so Arena has been interesting to me for that. Anyway, PV mode, give me PV mode. more about our goals for Arena and the changes in a dev blog coming out next week. All right. So now, on to something we touched upon back in January. We told you all that we were cooking up another new game mode, and we wanted to tell you all a little bit more about it today. We mentioned that we were making something that would be a little different take on League's core gameplay, but a bit more chill comparing to Arena. Well, after months of work, it's time to let you all know that we are currently working on our first Bullet Heaven Survivor PvE game mode. In this mode, you'll oh, be able to fight against- Oh, it's a, oh, oh no. Oh no, you can't do that to me. <laughs> oh no. Oh, do you have any idea how many fucking hours I have in Vampire Survivors? 
Riot, you piece of shit assholes. Like, of course Riot would do this. Of course they would. Of course, Jesus Christ, of course they would. Of course Riot would eventually get around. Like, the same thing they did with, with fucking TFT. The same thing they did with Auto Chess, right? Like, where they, like, Dota made Auto Chess, and then a, a, like a, a little team of people at Riot were like, hey, we could make Auto Chess out of our guys. And <laughs> just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking like the same way that League of Le like it's the joke, right? League of Legends is a ripoff of Defense of the Ancients, right? Like which was this Warcraft three and Starcraft custom game mode thing, and then like 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 Dota releases auto chess, and then League of Legends goes, we have an auto chess as well, and then they just take over the market and dominate it. Um, they like they they blew poor auto chess out of the water a little bit there. Um. <laughs> And now they've seen vampire survivors and like, we can do it again. <laughs> of course they would. And fuck, god damn it. Oh, if that if that is even a little bit it doesn't even have to be very good. Again, ADHD. Bullet Heaven, Survivor modes, Survivor games, they are crack cocaine for my permanently like dopamine deficient brain. Like just Ooh, if this is even a little bit good, oh no. Oh fuck. Oh shit. <laughs> oh hell no. Oh god, they're gonna Oh, they're gonna get me. Oh no. Oh please I I want that to be good because I really wanna fucking just play a bullet heaven as Brom or whatever, but on the other hand, oh no. <laughs> It's hordes of enemies by yourself or with friends. So whether you're looking for a challenge or you just want to have some fun with friends, we want this to be something everyone can enjoy. I know a lot of us, myself included, have some pretty fond memories of previous PvE modes like Odyssey or Star Guardian, but this time we wanted to make something markedly different. And while we aren't quite ready to show you much yet, we can give you a little bit of an yes. idea of what this looks like early in development. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Give it to me! Mm. I want this very badly, you have no idea. Because, like... Okay, my fondest hope here, my fondest hope for this is, first of all, that it'll be good, that it'll be worth anything, right? Like, who knows? Um, but more specifically, that they'll do the TFT thing, where, they, like, they release this as a game mode for the game, as, like, a temporary thing, and then it becomes really popular, and people like me sink like 140 hours into it and just keep coming back for more and more and more and more and then they spin it off into their own thing like tft and it gets its own thing with its own skins and like its own special and champions and like they make new creatures for the like, mm. <laughs> oh no oh no oh and did we mention it'll be coming out alongside our upcoming mid-year event this year well that's it for modes for now but we hope you'll enjoy the return of Arena, and we'll be back to share more news about our upcoming Bullet Heaven Survivor game mode in a future dev update. Mm -hmm. Thanks for playing, mm -hmm. and we'll see you all in Arena. In January, we shared that we're updating the Champion Mastery system. Oh, fuck me. That, oh, that could be bad. Shit. <laughs> I can, because, mm, like, making a really fucking stupid broken build with a League of Legends champion and, like, a bullet hell survivors game with all like because the thing is like bullet hell survivor games like vampire survivor is is probably one of the greatest examples of its own genre like that's one of the miracles of vampire survivor is that being the f essentially the first game in its own genre a genre it invented for itself more or less kind of like there were other things right it is still to this day also just like nothing beats it for just that sheer joy of creating a stupidly overpowered build and just standing still while spell effect mow down everything in a 15 mile radius around your character right like playing as the fucking tree right um and like and what i'm sitting here in my head now okay so they they do that but they have access to all of the assets all of the 3d assets all of the spell effects all of the sound effects all of the all, all of the assets that have ever been made for Summoner's Rift for League of Legends, all of the character models, all of the everything. And it's like, that's, you can reuse so much good shit. You can reuse so many fucking things. And it's like, whoa, that could be just, that could genuinely, like, I'm sure it's going to be real fucking jank when it first comes out. Like, that'll be, it'll probably be fairly sort of sparse and, and half finished by the time it first comes out. Um, in the same way TFT was um, in the beginning, like sort of a little bit cobbled together, but like, 
that could actually end up being something that's like aesthetically and visually quite compelling because like vampire survivors didn't leave a good first impression right like you saw that and it was like oh this look this what the fuck like this looks really shitty and basic and like nothing right um because it's these sprites that are just sort of standing on screen with like uh, some vague spell effects and then just shit happens and but it's like that core gameplay loop like that core dopamine addiction that you very quickly develop with it um that sort of carries you through and that eventually like over time with many updates um nowadays it has like an actual distinct aesthetic of its own like one that like like that, that like has a, a particular charm um all its own it has like developed a look that is sort of unique to it but i've been thinking like i've not played vampire survivors in a long time but i have been playing a fuckload of deep rock galactic survivors um i've been sinking a fuckload of time into that one um and part of the reason why that one sort of grabbed me and and has, has taken over from vampire survivors for me is because this is a game that like that reuses a bunch of the deep rock galactic assets a bunch of like the really good art direction the really good like like the really high quality assets the good animation that already exists in deep rock galactic and then recontextualizes that into that, like, survivor bullet heaven thing. Um, and, like, that to me is catnip. Like, because, like, like, yeah, the dopamine cycle and addiction is, is a big deal. But also, I am a visual creature. I like seeing cool, pretty things on screen. I like nice animations. I like cool character models. I like all of that shit. So I'm literally like, fuck, fuck, you motherfuckers. You, you might have just created my, like, you might have just, like, created the, the, the exact Pokemon type combination that'll hit my weaknesses for eight times damage. Oh dear. When we announced it, there was some feedback from you all regarding the changes. And one area of feedback was that it felt bad to grind for titles and then lose them the next split. And we agree. So we've made the champion specific titles permanent. We're also changing the way you gain mastery points. Currently your mastery score is impacted by your team's performance over. Will I gain mastery from playing the PVE mode? Will I gain experience points? That's the other thing is, like, are they going to tie... Because like, they can't, right? Like, they can't really tie Champion Mastery into, into like, the PvE mode, right? They can't really, but, like, maybe experience points? That's the kind of thing is, like, if that PvE mode is even remotely successful at all, it'll have a battle pass in a hurry. Like, they're, like the, don't, don't you fucking fret about... They'll put a battle pass on that shit. They'll put a battle pass. They'll put, like, a, a progression track. They'll put a thing on it like a, a meta progression track that'll sort of hook you in even more and i'm starting to get real worried <laughs> i'm starting to go like oh no oh no am i gonna get addicted to league of legends again oh no that's i've i've been clean for like i've been clean for like a decade oh no <laughs> for all but with this update it'll only account for your own performance instead of factoring in your team's overall average we're also changing how much wins and losses are weighed. So even if you lose your game, you'll still progress your champion mastery more than you would today. We're targeting to launch the system with the changes we just mentioned on patch 14.10 on May 15th. Okay, it's also been a bit since we talked about Lee Sin. Yes. So we wanted to give you a little update on how his visual overhaul is going. Show me. As one of our older and most iconic champions. Yeah, so they're really not changing much about him. Like he, He's one of those very, very, very faithful updates. To a fault, I would say, even. Because, like, why doesn't he have a trinket from Udyr? Why doesn't he have, like, a little Freljort thing? Like, why? Like, I think, I feel like there's things they could have done to bring him more in line with modern Ionian aesthetics. Uh, like, something has been happening. Like, they, there's definitely, like, the design aesthetic of, like, the decorations on his pants and, like, the way that, that all of this shit is put together is definitely much more in line with modern Ionia. And, like, they sort of got rid of the sort of tribal tattoo thing and replaced it with something that's much more smooth um, in it, in the way that it's put together. But I really do feel like mm, there was a missed opportunity here to imagine him a little bit more radically in favor of just, like, stick as close as fucking possible to the source material, don't change anything. Uh, because Lee Sin is popular, right? Like, which is the thing, like, that's the tragedy of Skarner's. If Skarner had been a really popular champion on the level that Lee Sin is, he probably would have gotten a faithful update as well, because, like, the 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 number crunchers at Riot would have been like, no, no, the numbers say players are way too attached to the like, like, whereas, like, now, like, in the situation Skarner's was in now, is, like, probably the number crunchers said, oh, no, 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 Skarner is, like, um, 
Skarner is like, uh, he, no one gives a shit about Skarner. Just do whatever, right? And that's sort of that's sort of the 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 tragedy of League of Legends champions. Is like sometimes there are champions who feel like they really needed a radical update, who just will not get one because they're too popular, and Riot won't risk pissing off their mains, right? Like, of, of alienating their mains and making them upset. And then there are champions who need faithful updates, like, like who, who might benefit more from, like, a faithful, a more conservative, restrained recreation who get these radical reinventions because numbers says champion unpopular. Um, and I, uh, it's, that, that doesn't feel great to me always. They still needed a lot of work to meet our modern art and tech standards, while maintaining the feel that his mains have learned and come to love it. Oh, I actually, oh, I actually don't like that little change. You see how the robe on uh, Acolyte Lee Sin, they do that thing of like, it sort of snakes up over his nose down there from there. Like, presumably they changed that for animation reasons, because that, that does restrict the kind of head movement that he can make. Um, that does put a lot of animation restrictions on him, but it that does look a lot cooler over there than it does over here. Like, this looks way more sort of generic World of Warcraft NPC. This is still kind of generic World of Warcraft NPC, but this is more striking and interesting, I think. And the color scheme here is also changing it to that flat purple away from these, like, really bright colors. That's sort of... Eh. Uh, getting rid of the shoulder spikes is good, though. Like, yeah, definitely get rid of them. But that, I, I mean, I don't know what the lore is now for Acolyte Leeson, like what, what, where exactly they're going to place him, because I don't think his old Acolyte skin had a placement in any of the skin lore things. Maybe they're shoveling him into the into one of the skin universes or something, and they're changing that to sort of match that. Who knows? But mm, I feel like, yeah, I feel like there's something lost from Acolyte there, which, like, probably good reason for it, but yeah. Over the years. This includes things like rebuilding his model from the ground up, making his appearance more consistent across all of his. Yeah, so that's not model, though. That's not his model. Those are renders. Those are, like, artistic renders. I have to imagine. Hmm. It's just me at his least sin. They've changed something about the way his face is that makes him look a little bit... Not necessarily younger. Not younger. That's not the thing. He's not younger, but he looks different in a way that I can't really... Certainly in these artistic renders. Skins, adding new fluid animations and updated visual effects. And if you listen closely, you might even be able to hear quite a few new sound effects. We also took this opportunity, no you're not, to address some issues players have noted over the years. With a keen eye on improving gameplay clarity, we made some bigger changes to how his abilities look, and some skins like Storm Dragon Lee Sin, reducing the noisiness of his visual effects, and bring the skin's design more in line with his base skin. If you want to learn more details about the process, check out the dev blog that's out now. You can expect to see Lee Sin's visual update to be released with patch 14.9 on May 1st. We also have a small Maybe even tiny update on Timo. We're targeting his update to be ready later this year with patch 1420. Oh. All right, we wanted to give you a quick update okay. on how we're handling ranked rewards. Interesting, because like Timo is another one of the updates that's like really like conservative. Like, and and Timo is one of the champions where it's like, yeah, like I don't know that I would change anything about him really. Like, not in the sense that he's like a great perfect design that doesn't need any changes whatsoever. Just in the sense that like. Yeah, no, he's he's an iconic little mascot character for the game, and like his design is kind of weird, not very well put together in my opinion. But it's also it's also very specifically him, like it's very unique to him. No other game character is ever gonna get confused for Timo, um, because he has like the helmet, he has like the red ruff around his neck, he has like the like the the smiley face and the, and the fucking jar that he carries around on his back with the maps in it and shit, and the little blowpipe. That's like. That doesn't really look like anything else, and that uniqueness sort of justifies keeping him the way he is, even though even though I do think like there are definitely things you could do with his design that would make him look more interesting, more fun, more cool, that could do more character building for him. He's kind of an empty, no personality character in a lot of ways. Um in in, in his visual design specifically, I mean. Um But it's also I kind of get not wanting to change him at all. Like, I, because I don't think I would either. Like, if I was, like, if I was dictator of Riot, I'd be like, yeah, no, just, just, 
just update the fidelity like just make the model rig better and more able to animate and like more charming and more like and and like just just upgrade the technical quality of the thing because as a character design even though it's kind of not great it's not great in a way that's distinctive and unique and special to this to league of legends right so like yeah it's probably fine not to change now it that we have three rank splits per year similar to last year we plan on having a unique victoria skin per rank split and since the first split is ending in a few weeks we wanted to let you know that cogmore would be receiving the first victoria skin of the year Ooh, hang on no 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 wait wait Ooh. oh i kind of like that that's not like victoria skins to me are usually real fucking boring um like I, I never because it's just the champion in cool armor or but I like they're rarely particularly interesting. This like with the eye on the head and like the extra eyes around like this the spiky tongue shit. Like I don't like the armor that much, but like that's distinctive fucking face, which is like the most important part of Cogmo is the face. That's pretty cool. That's I, I kind of like that. Then Fish the boy. Too, the reward will be Victoria Sona. Now, if you unlock the Victoria skins for all three splits, you will also receive a Victorious border for each of the skins at the end of the year that will display your highest rank across the year. That's it for today. As a reminder, please do check out the dev blogs to learn more about some of the things we discussed. Also, before the next dev update, the Empyrean themed MSI event will have started in beautiful Chengdu, China. So make sure you tune in to see which team punches their ticket to Worlds and who earns an additional seat. Okay, so in, in my typical way here um i go and i read the leeson asu article which is like a really long technical breakdown of how they made the asu with all the skins and shit like that and that sort of just went off and doubled the length of this video all on so and so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna cut that bit off and make it like its own video standalone um because i feel like that just makes a little bit more sense and works a little bit better uh so yeah go 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 watch that if you want to like dive with me into like reacting to the specific technical details of the Lee Sin ASU. Spoiler alert, they're pretty good, actually. Real good. There's a lot of good work happening over there. Um so yeah. But this video's over now, so bye.